Hey, Steve Mignani here at Burnson Auto Wrecking doing the junkyard crawl with the story of the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Now, the Wagoneer was made for 29 consecutive model years, which is something of a record. The Fox Mustang only went 15 model years. So again, from 1963 through 1991, these were made with virtually no changes to the basic body shell and frame. I mean, there were small things that were done, like the visor over the front window, but largely this was a stamping assembly that paid for itself dozens of times over for Kaiser, and then American Motors, and in the end, Chrysler Corporation. Now this one here is an 84, the very beginning of the Grand Wagoneer. And uh, interesting stuff on this one, of course, are aluminum bumpers, which would have been something from the uh, AFX era in the 1960s, but by the early 80s, it was all about CAFE, the EPA, minimizing weight for fuel economy and safety. So the aluminum bumpers on these things are factory equipment. Now under the hood, these could be had with everything from the 304 to the 360 to the 401. This one, well, it could be anything. The AMC small block from 290 to 401 cubes, they kind of look the same. So what I do is I go to the emissions certification sticker here, and here we see 360. So this was a 360 with a two barrel carburetor. You can see the image right there of two holes. So that's one way to tell. So somebody snagged the intake off this thing, but the 360 AMC engine in 1984 was reasonably powerful. It was, you know, emasculated, nothing like the, uh, the SC360 Hornet engine of 1970-71, which was a little animal with 280 horsepower. But again, it was enough to get this thing down the road. But, um, the thing about the Wagoneer is this was a major profit center for, again, Kaiser, AMC, and then Dodge, or Chrysler Corporation. Uh, these sold for $23,000, the Grand Wagoneers, whereas a basic Wagoneer was like six or $7,000 less. So the Grand Wagoneer brought you a lot of luxury. And I remember as a kid, I went to a private high school, and all the yuppie kids and their moms and dads drove these things. These came with standard power windows, standard power seats, leather gut, deep shag carpeting, cruise control, all that stuff. And I'll come around to the other side, we'll meet in the middle, there's a story to be told. Now this is, as all Grand Wagoneers were, all-wheel drive. Now what you'll see right here is the control. Here it is, two-wheel drive, there's four-wheel drive. You can't just do this, it's locked out. What do you do? You pull down on that knob on the bottom and then you can go from two to four-wheel drive right there. Now this is what's called Quadra Track, and it's something that American Motors came up with in the mid-70s. Uh, and again, it was a way to have four-wheel drive without the need to get out and lock the hubs. And that was a unique thing to Jeep vehicles in the 70s that uh, Ford, Dodge, and, uh, and Chevrolet did not have. So it was unique. Now here's a close-up of that. This is from an AMC uh, Jeep dealer brochure. And right here, we can see how that Quadra Track worked right here. Now a guy named Roy Lunn, who actually was on the Ford GT, uh, Le Mans dom dominating race team in the 60s, uh, he was the guy behind the GT40 in many ways. He joined American Motors and came up with the Quadra Track, which basically has a torque sensing center differential, which is engaged or disengaged, but it basically routes power to the front, rear, or all wheels, depending on demand. So again, no need to get out and get under in a Grand Wagoneer or any Jeep vehicle with Quadra Track. No, Another thing too, speaking of unsung heroes, you gotta wonder what do the Ram Chargers and the Jeep Grand Wagoneer have in common? Well, Jim Thornton. Jim Thornton, as we know, was one of the founding members of the Ram Chargers. Here he is right here in the prototype for the altered wheelbase car. That's Jim Thornton at the wheel. Now Thornton worked for Chrysler from 1960 or so through 69. And in 69, when the performance era was kind of winding down, he went to work for Rupp, which is a manufacturer of snowmobiles and go-karts. And Thornton, while he was at Rupp, had a lot to do with things like the Rupp 850 double muscle snowmobile. So Thornton was a heavy-duty, high-performance guy wherever he went. By 1972, Thornton wound up at Jeep as the chief engineer, uh, and he was with Jeep through 1986. So uh, what do the, the Ram Chargers and Jeeps have in common? Well, Jim Thornton, there he is right there. Now, he passed away in 2014. There's his picture right there. This is obituary, actually, right here. But Jim Thornton was one of my heroes, and is one of my heroes, from the Ram Chargers to Jeep 
and Jim Thornton's DNA is in the 65 Hemi A990 as much as it is in this Grand Wagoneer. Uh, so again, here we have it. This, is, this was the ultimate yuppie machine in the 1980s. This was a $23,000 vehicle when it was new in 1984, which is about twice the price of a five liter Mustang at the same time. So these were not cheap. And this was one of the ways that uh, Jeep, Kaiser, Chrysler uh, maximized. The thing is with these, the profit center in one of these things, for 23,000 bucks, they probably made $9,000 profit. And it was a huge profit center for Jeep. And this is one of the reasons the Grand Wagoneer, why, why Chrysler purchased the Jeep brand from American Motors in like 1984, 85, to get a hold of this vehicle. And again, the profits continued. Now today, in restored condition, these things are fifty to $100,000. So here is a, uh, a rare opportunity right here at Burris and Auto Wrecking. Uh, it's kind of rusty. It's either a parts vehicle or tomorrow's restoration waiting to happen. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and you like Grand Wagoneers, there's more where this came from at uh, the Steve Mags YouTube channel.